Hey everybody, welcome back to Reach Out Reptiles. I hope you guys are ready for another Super Dwarf versus the World! That was intense. Now if you haven't tuned in for any of this series, you're probably gonna wanna watch this video right here where I take my very favorite species and obviously I'm completely being scientific and unbiased about this and I categorically rate them across 10 different ways of looking at their viability as pets. Then we totaled up the score to get this score right here as a baseline. And then what I wanna do is go talk to all of my completely unbiased and scientifically accurate friends about the species that they work with. This week is gonna be a pretty fun one. It's probably one of the most epic reptiles on the planet, the mighty green anaconda. And who better to talk about green anacondas than the anaconda queen herself, Megan Kelly or Megaconda on social media. So we met up with Megan at the Tinley Park Reptile Show after a ridiculous successful breeding that she finally had producing the world's first captive bred green anacondas that are albino. She's got morph projects, she's got all kinds of like selectively bred projects, hand rearing all of her animals from babies and selecting for personality. I mean, nobody's doing green anacondas like Megan is right now. So let's take it to Megan and find out what she has to say. Okay, so the first one, the wow factor. I think it's just their size and the whole like stereotype around them. Because okay. like everyone knows Anaconda from like the movies. Yeah, they have like, their own whole movies. Yeah, which is, you know, not fact, but everyone thinks <laughs> it is. That's definitely the wow factor because every single time someone comes up to me and goes, oh, it's an Anaconda, they go, for, like the movie. Like, yeah, that's right, right. the whole wow factor of it. Yeah, there's not anybody, like you can know nothing about reptiles, you've still heard of the mighty anaconda. Exactly. Okay, so a wow factor, what would you say, one to 10, scale of one to 10? Probably like a 10. Solid 10 out of 10 for green anaconda. <laughs> How about like diversity within the species? There's not really that much to work with. You have the greens and the yellows. The yellows tend to have more morphs in them. They also have more of an attitude, which is why I don't work with yellows. Okay. I'm just not a fan of them. The greens, you have very few morphs, which only I have right now. What are those morphs? The T-positive and the anneries. Now, anery hasn't been proven out yet, to no, be fair. No, but hopefully I do it this next year. You think it's gonna happen? I, I hope so, I don't know. I think it's gonna happen. Okay, so one out of 10, what do you think? Probably like four or five Okay. for diversity. All right, 4.5. <laughs> How about attainability? Uh, greens, only a handful of people actually breed them, so. You're gonna and be there's alive. no importing of either of them Right, anymore. can't import any of them. Best bet is to go to like a reputable breeder to get one. Mm -hmm. Other than that, you can probably find one someone, like if you want like to start with a baby, they're harder to find. And fairly expensive. Yeah. Probably a little bit lower then, what do you think? Like a six. Six yeah. for attainability? Okay. No, maybe not, maybe lower. I'd probably like a four then. Okay, all right. You can I still get it. The lower it goes. Okay, there's only a few people who do it like consistently, but you can find like captive bred ones like every year. Someone's gonna have them besides myself. So but, you like, might have availability somewhere in the country. Exactly. A couple times a year. Yeah. And then the price on them is. Uh, it depends on who's selling them, but like a thousand to eighteen hundred. So they're pretty up there. Pretty yeah. Okay, so we're so. gonna go for a four. As I'm sitting here editing, I'm realizing Garrett completely skipped over the personality category. So we're gonna have to go ask her what the personality of an anaconda is. What would you rate an anaconda's personality? I'd probably give it an eight, but it's all based on like how the snake is raised. So they have a pretty calm demeanor if they're handled regularly as babies. Just kind of like what every other snake is if you handle it as a baby and it grows up getting used to being handled, it's actually relatively nice and calm. All right, so how about like uh, support industries? So like a, a good example would be like crested geckos. You could buy a cage from anywhere. They even have a lab-based diet, right? So if I'm getting an anaconda, is there like off-the-shelf caging solutions, a lot of reptile support industry for an animal like that? Not really. Anything like on the bigger side is harder to get caging for. Like you have to like either build it yourself, which is I do, I build my own cages, 
because my dad's got a machine shop, so we have everything we need right there. Other than that, like you can buy six foot and eight foot caging. Um, usually you're gonna have to wait for them to build it because there's such a back order and everything. So it's just, I think caging's a lot harder to get, especially right now. How about food? Food? I mean, you're talking about the largest snake on the planet. Right. I mean, I feel like it's kind of like the same as like mainland retics where you got to get like the bigger stuff. Like I feed pigs. I used to feed a lot more rabbits, which have been harder to find lately, but I have a good pig source. So it all depends on like where you live and like... So you need like pigs, Pigs, rabbits. rabbits. So basically you need farm animals. Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's probably going to be pretty low. What do you think? So market support. You're building your own cages and you need to have a farm to feed it. Basically. That's like a two or a one. Yeah, that's that's really low. We're gonna go 1.5, do you agree? <laughs> yeah. I'm not trying to put numbers in. No, but... I agree. Also depends on where you live, because if you live like where I live in California, it's a lot harder to find food, but if you live like in the middle of nowhere and there's farms around you, usually they'll just give you all the dead stuff. 1.5. <laughs> We'll be generous. <laughs> yeah. How about interactivity? Now you get to handle your green anaconda. How are they for that? So I always start mine out as babies and mm -hmm. try and like keep them nice throughout, you know, till they grow up, which is, you know, easy to do. Like go in there for five, 10 minutes a day, you play with it, they get used to you coming in and out of the cage. So that's really simple. But when you get like a wild caught animal or like one that's never really been handled, it's really not fun to deal with. All my adults that I raised are super friendly. So it's easy to do. You just have to put the work in to do it. Probably have to have, obviously, like snake training experience. Yeah, like big snake experience, basically. Yeah. So that's how I put it. As long as you know what you're doing and like can read their body language, like you're set. You can you can pretty much make them any of them calm. So what would you say, scale of one to ten? Probably about a six if you put the work in. If you don't put the work in, obviously the number is going to be lower. Six with an asterisk. How about their ease of care? got your green anaconda, I got my first green anaconda. How easy is it gonna be for me to take care of this animal? I mean, if you have a good food supply, it's pretty easy. Cage cleaning once, twice a week. You always have to clean their bowl because they love to poop in the bowl, the water bowl. So that's kind of the hardest part is keeping, giving them clean water all the time because they love to sit in it, they love to poop in it. And I've never had a big anaconda, but I have had other big snakes. They do like a pretty good horse impression. Fairly intensive husbandry, but not that often. No, my adults eat Every three weeks. Is that they, about they how often they defecate too? No, they do it more often, but like, like I said, they like to go in the water bowl. So it makes easy cleanup because it's in the bowl, but it smells the worst. But if, you know, the paper and like bedding is not bad, like it's just the bowl. So it, it's kind of simple that way. It depends on how they do it. So if how big it is and how mean it is, I'd probably give it like probably a five or a six. 5.5. <laughs> the hardiness of the animal or the durability of that animal. How do they do? I'd probably give them like an eight. Because really? they can take some cold temperatures, especially during breeding season, you want to drop them down to like 72, 73. Oh, wow. Yeah, cold. at night. And then they come back up during the day. And they don't have like respiratory no. issues like maybe a Burmese python. No, not something. at all. They're like the complete opposite of berms. Like you, they can take some pretty hardy temperature changes. Back. Is there anything that they're really sensitive to? Not anything that's like different from a diff like any other snake. Like okay. anything you wouldn't do with like a berm or retic, I wouldn't do with like them. But besides like the breeding temperature changes, like you really want to drop them to get them to cycle. So what do they get out of that one? Like an eight. Eight. All right. They're pretty good at it. How about like risk or, or like the danger factor with this animal? I mean, obviously we've all seen the movie and it swallows a lot of people really fast. Right? This, yeah, this kind of goes back to like knowing how to deal with the big animals. So it's like if you can read their body language, like you're fine. If you're not comfortable, have someone like there helping you, all that stuff, and like have like something on hand in case it does bite you, okay. which is like vodka or like vinegar. Some people use. I use vodka just because it burns a little bit more and they let go quicker. Never had to do that on myself, but I just know from stories. Any big animal is going to be a little bit dangerous. Know what you're doing. Respect the animal. But they're probably not nearly as bad as say like a tiger or a oh, no. snake as far as like zero margin of error. Right. But if you're like not comfortable with it, like just give the animal some time and like come back a different at a different time and deal with it. Okay. And how, how are their bites like damage wise? Not too bad? Like they're most not big that snakes bad. really aren't that bad. No. You're generally not gonna get stitches even if you got bit by a big one. No, I mean a retic you'll get stitches. Right. But so anacondas, anaconda they just put a little holes in you. I, I got a picture if you want. So they're real <laughs> 
Okay. Show the so where is the real danger then with an anaconda, would you say? Like it also depends on which kind you're dealing with. So if they're friendly, not that bad. If they're an angry one, it's probably higher your risk just because like this is why I say always handle them as babies to adulthood so you don't have that risk. Yeah. So they're used to you. If they're not used to you, it's much higher risk. Good would be higher, so, yeah, bad like, would be it, down, right? If it right? kills you by looking at you, it's a one. Okay, right? yeah, probably like a three then. Okay, so our final factor is like kind of an open thing. So like, what would be a good reason for someone to get a green anaconda? Like kind of what, what is it about them that thrills you? And throw a number on that. Well, okay, so I'll tell you how I got into it. What I did is I bought my first one on Craigslist because I like the whole name of the anaconda, like the whole stereotype about it. Fell in love with it, I still own it to this day. That's how most people actually want it is because of like the whole stereotype of it. If you're not like big into reptiles, that's why most people end up getting it. Okay, so like mythical creature owning was a category. What would you score the anaconda? Like a seven. Seven out of ten. There yeah. You have it. Super doors for the win again. Boom, baby. Of course, they did lose our last comparison video in this, but I don't know if it was the Super Doors fault. I think that was mostly Steven's ridiculous biases towards his scrub python. To not be the 10, 10, 10 guy, I'll, I'll give it a nine. There's no way they could like actually win Super Doors, right? I don't know. You can watch this video right here and tell me what you think about that one. But I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I always enjoy hanging out with Megan. She's one of those just kind of salt to the earth people. If you ever get a chance to meet her in person, highly recommend you do so. She's amazing. And Megan, if you're watching, we wish you all the luck on all of those amazing green anaconda projects you're working. Love you guys. Catch you next time. Enjoy.